week on the Autocar Show, Karthik test drives the new Hyundai Eon. We get you a closer look at the new Yamaha R15. And Hormaz tells us about his F1 car experience. Now, Hyundai is recognized as an expert in the small car domain. Just look at the Centro and the Itan. Both cars with strong brands, strong reputations and even stronger demand in the Indian market. But there's a segment below that with smaller cars that give better efficiency and the demand for those cars has been growing. But Hyundai hasn't had a challenger in that space ever. Well, up until now. Because what started as the HA project in 2007 has hit Indian roads as the Hyundai Eon. This is Hyundai's smallest car ever. Is the smallest car from Hyundai internationally as well? And well, we've had it on Indian roads first. This might well be the most important car for Hyundai's Indian innings after the Santro. In terms of styling, you can see that Hyundai has come a long way. This micro car is big on style. One look at its face and you know straight away that it is a Hyundai. The hexagonal grille is a family trait. As is the detailing in the headlamps. This is of course Hyundai's new fluidic look. The top end variant gets nicely integrated fog lamps in the body coloured bumpers. The Eon gets steel wheels only. No mag alloys are on offer even on the top end variant. At the side there are cuts and swoops aplenty with the waistline kicking up under the rear windows. The roofline too swoops down as it moves back. The rear might seem fussy in the pictures but in the flesh the design feels very attractive. The cutlass like tail lamps are striking. When you flip open the boot you get 251 litres of luggage space. But you can see some signs of cost cutting like the exposed wall of the boot. But what's it like on the inside? The interiors look really well laid out. There's a smart swept down design for the center console that juts out a bit at the bottom. The dash top has a cutaway to store knickknacks and keeping the preferences of Indian customers in mind, there's a small scooped out section on the dash where you can put up your idols. Overall, the interiors are very, very impressive. Now really full marks to Hyundai here because when you get inside the Eon, it doesn't feel like a small low cost car. I mean, look at the design, look at the colors, the materials, it just feels great. I mean, it, it has this upmarket feel to it. The materials are tough, but you will not think of them as low cost. And the design, I mean, look at the center console, looks very snazzy. These silver accents look very smart. And when you look at some of the features, they're very thoughtful. Like you have the option of having a tilt adjust steering wheel here, which is great if you want to get the right driving position. You get good support from the seat base. The side bolstering on the seat back though can be a bit too much for broader frames. Leg space and headroom is sufficient too and the equipment is ample. On the convenience front, the top end variant gets a keyless entry system, a double din music system with auxiliary input and USB connectivity. On the safety front, there's a single airbag for the driver, sadly no ABS is on offer. And how does the back seat fare? Now on a small car like this, you can't expect an absolutely lavish back seat, but the Eon is doing quite a nice job. I mean, as you can see here, there's adequate knee room for me. I'm not very tall and uh, I've set it to my seating position in the front, but things can get a bit tight if you have somebody tall sitting in the front. Uh, as you can see also, under thigh support could be a bit better, but what improves things here is the fact that, you know, there's a good amount of space under the front seat, which means you can push your feet forward and that really makes things more comfortable. But one area where things will remain a bit of a squeeze in that sense will be the headroom. Because of the sloping roof line, it does tighten up a bit so taller passengers will find it a bit short on headroom. To maximize space, the rear gets no door pockets or seat back pockets. It also saves cost, which is why the Eon also uses fixed headdress.
Hit the road and you get to sample Eon's 814cc 3-cylinder petrol engine. It develops 55.2 bhp and 7.65 kg of torque. It is basically the Santros motor with one cylinder taken out. The engine uses a counterbalancer to smoothen things. Despite that, you can feel the difference in refinement. At idle, you do get some of that vibe from the three-cylinder motor. You can feel the vibrations at the gear lever because the Eon uses a mechanical linkage instead of the cable-operated system as on the i10. When you get going, it does seem a bit hesitant, but as you dial up the revs, things smoothen out and the engine feels quite responsive in the mid-range. The engine also features an intelligent alternator management system. It cuts out the alternator's load on the engine when accelerating. Instead, it charges the battery when you brake or slow down. Still, it isn't very punchy, you know. I mean, it's happy to amble around in the city and zip around that way or cruise on the highway at, you know, 90, 100 kilometers an hour. But if you want to do something in a hurry, you're going to have to work the gearbox and rev it up. If you really rev it up, the Eon will even hit an indicated 140 km an hour. But the engine doesn't feel very relaxed there. The downside to that is that the engine feels quite strained when you rev it and the gearbox is quite notchy. Hyundai doesn't expect the Eon buyer to be bothered with performance as much as fuel efficiency, which is where the Eon really scores. It has a company claim fuel efficiency of 21.6 km per litre. And that should make up for its lack of pep for most buyers. Comfort is another important factor in a car. On a small car like this, ride can be quite choppy and clunky. However, the Eon's McPherson strut front and twist beam rear have been set up beautifully. Now the Eon suspension is very nice and pliant, it's absorbent, in fact it feels very grown up, very mature, it doesn't feel like it's the suspension of a smaller car, it's really a good setup. The only thing I found was at higher speeds if you go over some deep ruts or bumps, uh, the suspension does thunk through but that isn't such a big problem. It's all the more impressive as the top end Eon Beaver driving comes equipped with 13 inch rims. Now the Eon has a wheelbase of 2380 mm which is identical to the i10 and the Santro. But the Eon comes with a wider track than the Santro and it is 90 mm lower too. Now unlike the Santro, the Eon is no tall boy so its center of gravity is lower so when you chuck it into a corner, it turns in quite eagerly. When you put it all together, the Eon promises to be an incredible package. Now get ready to get wowed by the Eon over a number of different reasons, but one of the most obvious ones being the way it looks, it's head turning, striking, and you get that sense of style even on the inside, topped with great fit finish, great build quality, a great set of features. So it ends up getting this sense of appeal, this upmarket uh, sense to it, which is great for somebody who's looking at a compact entry-level hatchback. It's of course backed with some great mechanicals like the suspension. It feels very confident over a variety of surfaces and at a variety of speeds. Uh, the boot adds some practicality to the mix. The back seat can be a bit tight, but it's the front where the driver owner of the Eon is going to be. And that's where it's got good space. It's comfortable. One area where I could do with a bit more of the wow factor is on the engine on the performance side. While those adequately refined, when you push it, it does feel a bit strained. And uh, well, a bit more punch in the proceedings would have really brought it in line with the rest of the package, which is quite exciting. The gearbox also feels a bit notchy. But Hyundai is claiming class leading levels of fuel efficiency and that will mean a lot for a lot of you out there. And at the price at which the Eon is being offered, it certainly seems like it's going to be the new benchmark in this class and it's going to be around for a long time to come. Stay tuned, Karthik rides the new Yamaha R15 on a racetrack after this break. <laughs>